Welcome to our lecture online. In order to get a better idea of how to calculate the forces on the members and on the joints, we take a look at a simple example like this. This is a very simple truss system. Uh, we have the two beams this way, we have one beam going this way, and two more beams going this way, with two joints here and one joint on each side. Let's take a close look at this very top joint right here, because essentially what happens when we put a load onto this truss in this direction? Let's say that this is a force of some sort of load. How does that translate to that joint up there? Well, it makes sense to see that we would be pulling on this member right here, which means that this member would be under tension. There's a force pulling down on the member this way, and then there would be a force on the member this way from the joint, and that's the hard thing to understand. Why would there be force in the up direction if there's tension on this particular beam? Well, the reason is because this beam is attached to this joint right there, and if the beam is being pulled down, the joint will be pulling up on the beam. Otherwise, the beam would start moving downward, and that's how it makes sense. At the same time, since the beam is pulling on the joint right there, you can then see that the force on the joint is downward because that's the force of the beam here of the member pulling down on the joint. Well, why doesn't joint start moving downward? It's because it's being held in place by these two beams right here, which are now under compression. So those beams cannot move relative to those two points right here. So the beams are pushing towards the joint in this direction. They're therefore under compression. The joint is being, is being pulled down by this beam, and this, this joint will then be pushing against those two beams in this direction, so these two beams are under compression. They're also being pushed by the connections at the bottom, the two joints at the bottom. For the two beams are under, under compression here, this beam is under tension. You can see that this beam pulls down on this joint in this direction, and these two beams push up against the joint in that direction, keeping this in place. And that's how trusses work. It's always a network of beams under compression and beams under tension in such a way that very large forces can be withstood. In this case, you can put a lot of load on here, and that load is transferred to the compression of these two beams, which prevent this beam from going down as being pulled downward. That's how trusses work. So the basic concept when it comes to trusses and when understanding the forces on joints and members is to understand what happens at each joint. You can see you have to determine which beams are under compression and which beams is under tension. You can also see how the forces act on the beams and then how the forces act on the joints. If a beam is under tension, it will be, it'll be pulled by the joint above and by the joint below. When a beam is under tension, you can see how the joints on either end of the beam will pull on the beam. At the same time, the beams will pull on the joints. You can see that the force will be in the opposite direction relative to the joint compared to relative to the beam. The same when they're on the compression. When two beams are on the compression, as they are in this particular case, you can see that this joint is pushing against the beam, and then the beam is pushing back. Newton's third law, the beam is pushing back with an equal and opposite force in the opposite direction, and that is how the joint stays in place, enabled to hold a very large load here on this particular beam, which has enough strength to withhold a very strong load here, and that's what makes this beam to be under tension. That's the concept of trusses, and that is how we typically go through each joint and each beam to determine which is under tension and which is under compression and what happens at each joint. Stay tuned and we'll show you the, the details of how to go through each part of the, the truss to determine the forces throughout the entire truss structure.